Yeah, sauce, sauce yeah. Sauce Perfect. Mm. Spinach, various things. I don't even know what else is in there. Spinach, but it's pretty nice, good. It's sweet, but it's a small one. Okay, I'll try it. Ten hours with me, George. <laughs> That's gonna Buckle be up. Ten hours. <laughs> That's approximately 20 minutes of landing, 20 minutes of landing, thanks. George, something is seriously wrong, mate. Everything's wrong. I'm sat on the left, I'm driving on the right. They're driving to the left of me, which is the right of them. It's all backwards. It's all backwards, mate. Who do you think, who do you think messed it up? Do you think it was the Brits or the Americans that got it wrong? Who's the awkward one? Are I we mean, doing it the wrong way, or are the Americans doing it the wrong way? We've been waiting at this traffic you, light for about 10 minutes Yeah, now, we've been so. here for ages. We're trying to turn left. Somebody in the comments is going to be like, oh, you can't turn left from the traffic, but the person in front of us is trying to, to be fair. And also, coupled with this, in the UK it's midnight right now, and it's been a, an extremely long day, but apparently it's 6 p.m. and still sunny, so... A bit dramatic. LA. Made it. Where are we? Marriott. Very posh, very fancy, Georgie. Looks pretty cool. There's some lights up there. <laughs> That's not making the cut. <laughs> There's some lights up there. That is not making the cut. George, <laughs> if this is in the final cut, you're getting sacked. What's happening here? We might be switching rooms. This is George's room, apparently. That's a cool view. Mine. Ooh. Yours is definitely better. You want to swap? Mm. We're gonna have to swap. <laughs> swatch. Swatch? Swap. Yeah. We're gonna have to swap. Back again. Uh, who's paying for it, George? <laughs> Get out of there. Save you. We're here. It's now 1am to us, George. But 7, 7 o'clock here. Got to our hotel. Bit of food. Bit of sushi time. So, yeah, let's do it. That's the thing about sushi as well. Sushi's such a good, it's just a go to because you know it's going to be relatively clean. Bit of avocado, bit of veggies in the roll. You know it's going to be relatively clean, so it's a good option on the go. So we've been here for uh, we've been here for about six hours. And we've already found a gym. Classic. So, and it's sure 10:25. 10:25 p.m. Which to us is four times that to us, George. Four in the morning. Four in the morning. <laughs> and we've already found a gym. So we've been here about six hours. So. Why? Because it's what we do, isn't it, Georgie boy? It's what we do, we love this. Um, no, we went for sushi earlier, then we went to the pool. Um, we didn't show you that. We need some private time, right? We didn't show you the pool. And now we're in the gym, so. And the body clock tomorrow, we'll pay the price, but try and lift some weights, get a good workout in. Oh, feeling weak though. Whoa. Nice. Easy. There he goes. Majestic, <laughs> mate. Majestic. <laughs> I was going to try to do it at 6.30 today to take a walk, but... Oh, 
customers on the way. All right, day two, bit of juicy juice here. So the old uh, watermelon juice, this stuff is good. So refreshing, uh, so hydrating. Um, quick workout this morning, uh, jumped in the pool, did a couple of lengths, and now we're on the way to go and see Tia, former client of mine. She's got a big, you probably know her, she's got a, a big following online now. She's done really well on social media. So just going to uh, actually meet her in person for the first time. And uh, we'll do a bit of an interview, make a bit of content there. Probably won't show you too much of that because you can see the proper uh, interview slash podcast when it's out. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a good day. So we're going to do my review of the um, the cherry juice. It's pretty good. Um, I had a bit. Tastes a bit like Dr Pepper, like the cherry version. Mm -hmm. Not that I drink that anymore. I think it had pineapple in as well. Pineapple. Pineapple is pretty good. Very exotic. You. Yeah. I think we were just doing like a. We just, went, just went into it. Just went into it yeah. yeah. I think. Uh, uh, we are rolling, so we go whenever. Well, we're here. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it is. Tuesday. We got in Wednesday. Tuesday. Apparently, Wednesday. Tuesday. Apparently, Wednesday. We got in at some ridiculous hour yesterday. We're seven hours ahead. I hardly slept last night. I don't know. I don't know whether I'm coming or going, but one thing I can tell you for sure is that it's an absolute pleasure to be here with my dear friend. We're here. And this is barbecue brisket made from uh, black bean tempeh. So we'll give you a taste test. We've got to take some photos, do all the social media nonsense, check the boxes, but we'll give you a taste test in a minute. That's good, I like that. I don't know what I was expecting brisket to taste like, but or brisket to taste like, but that's good. It's very you stop. No. It's very um we'll leave that in. It's very um very very whole foodsy. Is it quite cold? but the brisket or is it it's very black it's 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 not as dense and thick as tempeh. It tastes very clean, very whole foodsy, I like it. First one Georgie, aren't you lucky? You're never gonna be able to go to a British uh, supermarket again once you've been in it, mate. The essentials. Oops. Yellow dragon. Dave is so jacked. Buff Dave and his bread. What's that you picked up? Nothing. Wasn't me, George. Wasn't me. It's not really Ryan Adams. I seem to have a thing for the colour blue, George. <laughs> George is, uh, George is constantly on at me for buying everything blue. Everything I get, come this way, this come. Everything I get is always blue, everything's blue. And of course, even though I literally had no choice, we were both laughing because it's a blue car. Right, this is our little sonder. We're still in Austin, but we wanted uh, something with the kitchen. We'll be here for the next couple of days. It's okay, it's not bad, it's not bad. It's a good kitchen area. Don't look down. <laughs> Don't That's look a down. Horrible drop. One bedroom. So this is your this one. This is supposed to be an ensuite, suite, but you can't actually get to the room. <laughs> you blocked it. Oh, you can. There we go. There we go. This is uh, Master Ryan's room. Master Bruce. Bruce Wayne's room. Not a bad view. Yeah, that's a pretty cool view. Got a little balcony as well. En suite. Cool. That's it. Home for the next couple of days. If I could get one person. We're not always perfect people. Not always perfect. Chin chin, as they say. Thing is, people get very tribal about 
the type of pizza they like, so it's got to be New York or Chicago. For me personally, I want loads of veggies on there. I want it packed. It's kind of sparse with the toppings. It's very bready. It's good, but what do you think? Do you agree? It's nice. It needs a bit more, but uh, not bad. Lil Nonna's, that's where we're at. But it's pretty good, it's not bad. Ryan is awake. How long have you been awake for? Did you go to the gym? We're time? not filming this. <laughs> Stop it. Pretty nice. Right, taste tests. Yellow dragon fruit. Let's do it. I've never had yellow dragon fruit. I've had regular dragon fruit, red dragon fruit, but never had this. So, uh, let's see what the situation is. Here we go. Do we get dragon fruit much in the UK? We don't get much dragon fruit in the UK, no. Very hard to find. I had, um, I had dragon fruit smoothies for a week last year when I was in Spain because you wouldn't think to put it in smoothies, but it's unreal. It's so good. Spoon. It's very kiwi-like. I don't know if this one is any good. Looks a bit juicy. Uh -huh. mm. It's slightly, slightly sweeter than regular dragon fruit, I would say. Mm. The way I'd describe it, is it's kiwi, but less tart, less sour. Like a sweet kiwi, mm. slash pear, it's almost pear-like. Mm. Yeah, I was just saying, even four or five years ago when I'd come to the US, um, and my relationship with food was a million times better, I'd lost a bit of weight by then, I would still go and go to Trader Joe's, go to Whole Foods and get like a bag of like cookies, and still could go through a whole packet very, very easily. And this time, George and I had that pizza yesterday, which, to be honest, it wasn't, I didn't even explain what was on it, did I? <laughs> yesterday, we forgot to explain, it was tempeh, seitan, a bit of vegan mozzarella, so it's not, it looked like it had loads of fake meats on it, didn't, it wasn't actually terrible, but it's not ideal. Um, and then we had, we had a cupcake each, basically, didn't we? We got two cupcakes yeah. from this vegan cupcake place, what's it, zucchini kill? Yes. Um, and yeah, we had half each, and they were good actually. They were good, peanut but there was jam, peanut yeah. butter and jelly one, uh, um, and they were good. But it was like once I'd had it, I was like, yeah, that's my fill. That'll do. Then we had some strawberries, didn't we? Right after, it's like go back to fruit. That's that's just the default. So it's um, egotistically, it's very validating to see that that sort of binginess has gone. I can still sort of indulge from time to time. But that major binginess has gone now. And then we went to the gym. And then we went to the gym, so yeah. I'll never get used to walking out of the shop to that overwhelming heat. Oh, so good. It's not overwhelming, it's beautiful. It is very nice, it's a lot nicer yeah, than Everyone that lives here moans about it, but <laughs> for us it's glorious. Physiotherapists are increasingly prescribing, not the movement I've just done, but the movement I'm about to show you, called dead hangs for people with shoulder problems. So if you do have a shoulder problem right now, not that it's my domain, 
I'm not telling you to do these, but it might be worth looking at, looking into, let me catch my breath, dead hangers. All you're doing, you're just hanging, so it's not even a pull up, which can be really intimidating to people. You're just hanging with your arms slightly, no, about shoulder width apart, maybe slightly further than that. And you just hang and you hold and you relax. There's no tension there, you completely relax and you just hold. For me personally, with a little bit of martial arts, a little bit of boxing, um, with lifting weight, this has 100% helped my right shoulder, which was not in tatters anyway, it's not terrible. But anecdotally for me, this has been brilliant. So I'm coming here, shoulder width apart, just relaxing, and I'm holding for as long as I can, which is maybe 30 seconds. Even instantly, you feel looser. Mix lettuce. So we'll throw on a handful or two of that. And then, got some pico de gallo. Throw that on there. A little more. And then, we've got, which I'm really excited to try, this stuff here is Credo Cashew, Spicy Cashew Queso. And this is pretty clean. This is really clean, actually. And it's two tablespoons, 35 calories, so pretty decent. So I'm really excited to try this. We've also got hummus, but I might throw that on the next one. We're gonna do two of these, I would think. Um, but uh, this is oil-free hummus from Carver, if you're in the US. So yeah, I'm gonna have a little bit of this uh, queso for now though. Throw that on there. Just a bit of that. Nothing fancy, Georgie boy. No fancy presentation here. I don't do that, I just throw stuff together. We're all about practicality, right? And, uh, oh, this is way too big. <laughs> it's way too big to fit in. What are we gonna make do? Like I said, all about practicality. It's turned into a burrito now. It has turned into a burrito. But let's do it. Okay, taste test. Not falling the top. Mmm. Mmm, that queso is good. I would like to have more veggies in there, but we're traveling, we're on the go, doing the best we can, but it's a really clean meal. Like this seitan, no oil, nothing. It's just the wheat gluten, a bit of soy sauce, some other flavorings, garlic, oregano, oregano, um, oregano, salt, pepper, cumin. Really good, so super clean meal. And these are amazing. So these bats are very small as we know, but they're not the smallest bats in the world. I love telling people about the smallest bats in the world because they don't believe me. The smallest bat in the world is a bumblebee bat, and they are smaller than actual bumblebees. I think it's cool to watch them. Oh my god! Oh my god! Tiny! It's bat bats! Yeah! Uh, that's very cool. But where are they going tonight? They're going to eat mosquitoes and moths. I'm very well, thank you for asking. I'm glad you're good. That was an excellent way in this morning, just what we needed. How do you feel about it? I know it's only one way in and we don't get carried away with that, but it was validating. How do you feel about it? I'm really, really Amazing. hungry. I'm really, really hungry. And we've got nothing left because we're going tomorrow. Watch that. <laughs> Watch where you're going then, boy. Uh, yeah, another beautiful day here. A couple of calls this morning. Well, one call this morning. Instagram stuff now, doing the old uh, spicy Satan wraps recipe coming soon. Well, it'll be up by the time this is out. Uh, and yeah, let's go explore pancakes. All right, day four, uh, we saw, what did we do yesterday? We saw the bats. That's pretty cool. Shush. First exit onto the West um, <laughs> We saw, shush. We saw uh, the bats yesterday, which is really, really something actually. It's a long old boat tour before the bats actually come out. Is this a roundabout? It is. Oh uh, yeah. Hold on. Second roundabout, yeah. Let me focus. Well, I can't come off yeah. it, can I? Okay, I have to go around. No, we're good for cars. Are we? Yeah. Um, Roundabouts in the US. That's going round and roundabout that way is bizarre. Shush. Um, <laughs> right, bats yesterday. Anyway, that was really really cool. Um, and today we're gonna check out the Texas State Capitol because that looks really cool. Still in Austin. Still in Austin. We head out to Big Bend tomorrow uh, National Park, which will be that'll be fun. It'll be a total change of pace. Um, but now, when in Rome, 
pancake time. We're going for some pancakes. And the diet, the diet here, I mean, the exercise has been amazing here, hasn't it? But the diet here has been, it's been, relaxed. I mean, it's been relaxed. 50 50 isn't a fair summary. We had good meals. We had those wraps, healthy wraps that we made at home yesterday. But uh, yeah, and you know, we've eaten out, we've had a bit of pizza, haven't we? We had those cookies yesterday, a bit of ice cream last night. It's not been perfect, truth be told. Um, but we're gonna enjoy these pancakes now because we're on holiday, we're on vacation. It's all good. This might be around the way. So, change of plan, uh, pancakes, we turned up and uh, there was a 20 minute wait and Ryan Adams, Ryan Adams doesn't wait. So, we're at Juice Land again, um, which is fine because we like Juice Land, so brilliant. Thick, but good. Out of all the footage you're about to get with a beautiful building, this ain't it, George. Save yourself the trouble. <laughs> so random. I like the new design. They put the antique scaffolding. Four healthy snacks, four fat loss I've got for you today. And what's better to start with than fresh fruit? High water content, low calorie density, lots of flavor to keep you full up for longer. Come here, Georgie boy. Show the people. Not exaggerating, that's, that might be up there. That might be top three for watermelons. That is, that's really good, really sweet. All right, it's the next day and we are out of Austin, day five. We didn't really record that much yesterday. We didn't film that much yesterday. What did we do yesterday? We went to the Texas State Capitol, you saw that. And then after that, what did we do? Whole Foods. Um, to get provisions for this trip now. We're on the way to Big Bend, Big Bend National Park, which uh, I'm excited about. It'll be uh, some different scenery. Uh, I've got my hummus and avocado sandwiches here that we prepared earlier. And what else did we do yesterday? Tacos in the evening. They were really good, really good tacos in the evening. We're going to have to go back to that place. That was awesome. Um, so, yeah, we're heading out here to, uh, to Big Bend. George. Ask me what the word of the day is, please. What's the word of the day? The word of the day is honky tonk. <laughs> honky tonk. Do you remember what it means? Someone told us a few days ago. Do you remember what it? I knew anyway. Do you, do you remember? Uh, I actually can't remember. Disgraceful. Disgraceful. Honky tonk. I think, and I might, I might actually stand corrected myself on this, but I believe so. Someone. Uh, in the comments, please uh, correct me here, but I believe a honky tonk is a like a, a hall or an establishment, let's say, for dancing and for all things Western US culture. But I may stand corrected on that. Honky tonk, how good is that? Here's another good one haberdashery. I said it earlier actually, I don't know if you heard me say it. You know what that means? And again, I might stand corrected on this. I think it's like a, just a miscellaneous shop that sells just various things. I might be wrong. I wonder if it's something to do with clothing. That's just popped in my mind as well. So I might be wrong on that, but how cool is that haberdashery? Well, hello, ma'am. Welcome to my haberdashery. <laughs> my name's Ryan Adams. What can I do for y'all today? Beautiful. Um, what else can we talk about here, George? Look at this, the landscape change. Just oh, in wow. this, we've got a, what, seven hour drive today? Yeah, it's looking. 
getting through it, but we've had a seven hour drive seven, today. Five hours left. Five hours left, so we're two hours in. And already the landscape from Austin out to Big Bend has changed a couple of times already, hasn't it? But it's lovely to see. It's nice to drive in a different place, even though I'm still not 100% used to uh, driving on this side of the road, the wrong side of the road, by the way. Um, it's it's nice to drive in different areas and, and see things. I have been I have been steadily informing George on American history and politics because he is completely uneducated. <laughs> He's not, but it's interesting. I actually did um, GCSE history, so yeah, but you don't learn anything about you no. don't you don't learn anything about the connection between Britain and, and the US and the thirteen colonies, US. the Revolutionary War. Yeah, you don't learn anything. I only know because I've been so many times and I find it an interesting part of history that doesn't really get covered in the UK. I mean, you know about, how much do you know about George Washington, etc, etc, Benjamin Franklin, Founding Fathers, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. so if there's any historians, please correct me on any of this, I'm not an expert um, on, on um, the American, American Revolution, but 13 colonies running down the East Coast uh, under British rule, under rule of the Crown, and I think I think it was George, it was certainly George, Georgie boy. Good old Georgie boy. George the third. You're George the 26th, but uh, it was George the third, I think, on the throne at the time. And him or Parliament completely underestimated how serious Washington and his mates were to actually do something about it, to actually take action. And the big, listen to how bad this was, George. So basically, the Crown was charging taxation, we were charging taxes to the Americans, to these 13 colonies, but in return, we wouldn't allow them a Member of Parliament. So for every county or region, however it was divided up at the time in the UK, in Britain, you would get a representative in Parliament, right? So your taxes ideally would go towards someone who represented your region, your area in the UK as it still stands today, and would go and fight your issues and the things you care about in Parliament. We were taking the same taxation from the Americans, but refusing to give them any represent representation within Parliament. And there were a couple of other qualms as well with, with the British rule, but I think, hold on, let me just change my answer. I think that was, uh, I think that was the main criticism anyway, and that was the main problem. And they did come to us and they did say, look, we're gonna, we're gonna need something. We're gonna need something here. We're gonna need someone to, to represent us here, or maybe ideally, as it probably should have been, a, a member of parliament from each of the 13 colonies. I think that probably would have only been fair. Um, and we refused. And George slash parliament and or parliament, I'm sure there were factions of, of British parliament that were sensitive to, to the American cause, actually. I'm sure it wasn't everyone was just completely oblivious and ignorant and self-centered with it. But uh, generally, Parliament and the Crown just totally underestimated how serious um, the Americans were for leaving and just didn't see the value in, you know, their argument. Um, and so eventually, obviously, Washington and co thought, sod this, this is no good. We're gonna have a bit of a we're gonna have a bit of a scrap with you here. So it did start amicably, and there were negotiations and that sort of thing. And they did go to the Brits and say, "What can we do here?" But uh, yeah, how bad is that? So we were charging taxes, but with <laughs> we weren't allowing them any say in anything. Terrible. It's completely unfair. So yes, obviously we didn't want all the bloodshed that came with it in hindsight, but those were the times. And um, but uh, yeah, it, I suppose it had to come to that. Yeehaw, cowboy!